Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another course vlog. As you see, we are out here at the La Quinta Mountain Course. 6,666 yards of peat dive mastery here in the La Quinta Mountains. Here on hole one, this relatively simple par four for peat dive starts out with a wider fairway and as you can see here we cannot go left down into that trench bunker and off to the right hand side there are plenty of little baby dunes humps and bumps This two iron was able to smoke on down the middle, a little down the left hand side, and I kind of caught the side of that trench. First time I'm going to have a really awkward live ball way above my feet. Just take a gap wedge, hit it in the middle of the green. Aimed for the middle of the green here and left myself a relatively long 30 foot putt here for birdie. Luckily, during the summertime, these greens do grow out and the grass is a little bit longer than you'd see during the winter. Greens make it a little bit slower and man, they just grab these long putts and glue it to the ground. Not very much run out here during the summertime, like you'd see out during the winter. Now, Pete Dye doesn't waste very much time here with hole number two, introducing you to the water. There's plenty out there to the left. There's also plenty of grass out to the right-hand side. Let's take this six iron right at the flag. Oh, oh, but I juiced it and uh, 190 that should absolutely be a seven iron as I've learned since this trip took this little birdie pitch though and hey knocked it up three feet knocked in the par putt and we're on to the next one number three here is a relatively simple par four as well again you got trouble off to the left hand side this resort course really Airs for the right-hander's slice is what I've noticed. And well, that was a right-hander slice. Right of the cart path, down in this little gully. It's no matter though, everything is beautiful green grass, a nice lie, a good number, and you can still give yourself a makeable birdie chance. Unfortunately, I got way too quick with that one, and that was the ugliest putt you're gonna see all day. But this here is one of the most beautiful holes on the property. This long par five is a double dog leg around two little fingers of the mountain. After laying your tee shot here between these two bunkers, you're gonna be blinded by the edge of the mountain. There's the green tucked all the way over another bunker on the left-hand side, plenty of fairway off to the right to lay your second shot up and approach this relatively simple three-tiered green. absolutely unloaded on that tee shot tried to hit a little bit of a draw but you know what it went absolutely stick straight right over the bunker you saw and well this is a baseball lie just gotta hack it out really thought I might be able to make solid contact with it and get it all the way down to the hole but as natural, I hit it fat and left myself a decent chip shot here. Two shots in a row. How many times did I say sit? What, about 12 or 15 times between those two shots? Oh boy. All right, let's just get up and down. Again, you can see the slow grains. The ball really is not rolling out. 
but because of that, you really got to hit these short putts a little bit firmer than you might like to, a little bit uncomfortable. Hole five here, this little short par three is just carved into the mountainside and it's death off to the right hand side, this time a big deep bunker. One fifty seven is a typical nine iron for me, so I just took that and figuring it might go a little bit long, went to the middle of the green, and I left myself another twenty five footer here for birdie. Hey, there we go. It's a nice birdie to roll in, get me back to one over par. And we're facing one of the more difficult par fours in front of us, sitting 400 yards flat. You have to fly that water on the right-hand side, right where you see the guy fishing balls out of the water. He's about 240 yards off the tee. That's a decent little tee shot. You gotta get down there between all of that trouble. This green sits elevated above the fairway. It's not visible from there. You just see a little flag stick floating up against that mountainside. For me, a two iron here flies 250 yards and I'm hoping it should be plenty to get it down in the middle of that fairway. Mission accomplished center of the fairway, a soft pitching wedge into this blind green. And here we go, another really makeable birdie putt. Back to back? Absolutely not, look at that thing. Such a slow putt and that thing turned like mad onto the easiest par five on the golf course. And they got this little hidden tee box here that we decided to climb up to and give ourselves just a little bit better view. Now you see it there, 492 yards in a par five, this is as gettable as they get. That water does come into play down the right and the bunker is about 240 to clear from the tee box that we're playing. Just take a driver and you just can't go right. As you see, the farther you go, the narrower that fairway becomes. If you hit your target though, you got an elevated green here sitting with that deep, deep bunker off the right hand side and the deeper the pin is, the tougher it's going to be to get to. They really don't take care of this tee box too often, but eh, it's okay, we were able to get some tees in the ground, get some balls on the tees and let it fly. Right down the middle of the fairway, left myself an eight iron into a par five. And needless to say, I smoked it. Smoked it right over the green. Oh boy. I don't know if that was a lazy swing or I just absolutely hit it like mad. But this uh, sandwich of mine sometimes gets me out of trouble and I absolutely adore it. Up here to five feet for another makeable birdie putt. It seems like the makeable ones can't go in, but that one 25 footer did. Hey, that's just golf, isn't it? On the eighth hole here, the car path goes right through that giant waste bunker, which is blocked visually from the green by those giant mounds off the right hand side. Those sit about eight feet tall. The green is also elevated above this fairway. Once again, you can't see the surface from the fairway. You just got to pick your number and hope it is correct, as that green up there is protected by plenty of bunkers. It's another two iron for me off the tee. These par fours are just short enough that I really don't need much more than that 250 to 260 club off the tee and set myself up with a full shot into the green. Hit this one a little bit right. Still had a decent number, 122 the flag. It's a full gap wedge for me was able to hit it pin high off to the right hand side 
and once again, a makeable birdie putt. Since then, I have been working on my putting over and over and over. Hopefully, we've seen more putts go in here on the channel. And the most difficult par four we're gonna see on the front nine has that little pot bunker about 250 yards to clear, and you got water all down the left. The beautiful clubhouse in the background is the distraction for you, and the little baby green there is protected by all of those traps. If there's plenty of trouble on this hole to take your breath away. And at sitting at 433 yards, I've got to take a driver off this tee to give myself a little bit more of a chance and to take that pot bunker out of play. Luckily, that club was working for me today right down Main Street. Left myself another gap wedge into the green. Hey, I'm going to say it again. Are you ready for it? It's a makeable birdie putt once again that I don't make because I don't hit the putt. Oh boy, how low could this round have been so far? Well, please subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for the back nine coming at you soon. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you around next time. Later.